Reality TV shows are very popular. Nowadays, people watch shows like Dr. Phil, The Ellen Show, and a whole bunch of others. If you frequently watch these type of shows, which I don't, then you have most likely come across a few villains that occasionally get introduced into these shows. You know, the people who aren't as likable as the others, people you're meant to hate or feel disgusted by. In fact, Dr. Phil is literally centered around these types of people. I want my mom to understand that I can't live off of a thousand dollars a month, and I grew up on a certain lifestyle. She can't just take that away from me immediately. If someone took her lifestyle away from her, she wouldn't like that. And I grew up on it. It's all I ever know. I can't deal with this. And so, I came to you for help. Okay. Now I want to talk about this, cause in my opinion, villains don't exist in reality. Hence, a reality TV show will have to construct. The villains using artificial means, and today I wish to talk about that. I actually got this idea from one of my university lectures, which I will be addressing later on in this video. Okay. Reality TV show villains can be anyone because with proper editing and direction, you can make anyone look like a villain. The video I want to use for today's analysis was posted five years ago. So do keep that in mind. It's not subtle at all. He looks a baddie from Die Hard film. He looks a baddie from Die Hard film. Okay.、Uh, TV shows nowadays, I think, are probably way more subtle than this. But I think it's a good place to start, and it serves as a good case study. Disclaimer: I've never watched this show at all, and I probably never will. I believe it has around. 13 seasons. Although I will say that this one-minute video was posted on YouTube by itself without its full context, so I will be analyzing purely on this one clip. I'm also not criticizing this show by itself or directly; rather, I'm using it as an example to prove my points. Anyways, I'm going to show you the full video, and then we'll discuss. Oh, here we go, Swavy McSwaverson. He looks a baddie from Die Hard film. My name's David. I'm 31 years old, and yes, I am an international model. Oh、yeah. God, how woeful! Not just a model, he's an international model. The party gets underway, and Sam is already getting to know David. I mean, I've told you I'm a model and whatever else. There's a whole backstory to this. I didn't ask to be a model. It just kind of came just, to me somehow. I didn't ask to be a model. What's he do again? But don't judge me as a model just because I'm a model. <laughs> so I've been modelling for about 11 years. About six, seven years out of that has been overseas. Just recently in LA. You are awful. Go away. Then I went to Seoul in Korea. Then I went to Tokyo. Then I went to Osaka. Then I went to Milan, Paris. Where didn't you go, mate? What I know about David so far is that he's a model, and um, what else? See, that's why you're a good date. You asked about me,、mm. and I'm a chatter.、Mm. Can I ask anything about you? No. Oh boy. Okay. So, like I said, it's not subtle at all. It is the epitome of telling rather than showing. He looks a baddie from Die Hard film. Okay. But believe it or not, there are subtle elements that this show uses that most TV shows also use. Let's discuss.、Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is some audio elements. Take note of the music, especially the one that plays when David is first introduced. Now I'm no music expert, okay, but that's clearly not the type of music you would play for people like the main character of a movie. The background music uses very low notes that give off an overall negative sensation. It basically screams villain at you once you notice it. Another thing is sound effects, if that's what you call it. There's this one scene where David is talking, and in the background they use this very dramatic noise that you really only would use if something horrible was happening. Getting to know David. I mean, I've told you I'm a model and whatever else. There's a whole backstory to this. I've told you I'm a model and whatever else. There's a whole backstory to this. 
and I've told you I'm a model and whatever else. There's a whole backstory to this. Now, there's a visual element that's in play here that's so subtle that you may not have noticed it, and that is clothing. David is wearing very formal clothing. He's wearing a black suit, a bow tie, fancy shoes, etc. This is contrasted with the very casual clothing that these people are wearing. So what effect does this create? It's essentially a subtle way of telling the audience that these people are the people you're supposed to relate with. Because chances are most viewers watching this show are also at home wearing casual clothing. In a way, it further alienates David as the bad guy. It gives off the illusion that these people are more open. Compared to David, they look more honest, trustworthy, relatable, and down to earth. Whereas David's clothing portrays him as some sort of outside rich man who only cares about himself. Yes, I'm very aware that these people are at home and David is at a party. And that's the type of clothing you would usually wear in those kinds of settings. But the visual effect is still there. Now, you may argue that Sam is wearing a dress. Well, she's a girl, so people are going to simp for her regardless. Speaking of setting, that's another visual element that I wish to discuss. The people reacting are at home. Loosely with other reality TV shows, the person reacting is in another room, sitting on a chair as if they were being interviewed in a very formal setting. Here, the people reacting seem like they're comfortably sitting on their couches. They're showing a very casual posture. It doesn't feel directed at all, and it adds on to the idea that these people are being genuine with their reaction. I want to briefly touch on camera angles, because there's not much to go on in this one minute video. Again, I haven't seen the actual show, so I have no idea how they introduce each person, but here they do that show bad guys feet walking first before revealing actual bad guy cliche. That lots of movies tend to do when introducing a villain, so I just thought that was an interesting thing to point out. I also want to add that the reason why movies and shows use low camera angles for villains like this one, especially to show the shoes first, it's because it's positioned to look as if the villain is already putting themselves above the audience. It almost comes across as condescending, as if the villain is stomping on the audience. Not to mention, the shoes are probably the less appealing part of the body. Like, it's not the first thing you want to see when seeing someone for the first time. Another fascinating point is casting, or the people chosen to be the reaction people. None of these people are models, and very average looking. One glance and you get this idea that these people are normal, average, middle class, everyday people, which I'm assuming is meant to represent the show's main targeted audience. Whereas David is a model, good looking, and he talks about how he travels everywhere, something that not everyone has the luxury of doing. As a result, most viewers will resonate or relate with these people more rather than David, which again feeds more into the narrative that David is the villain. Another thing I want to add is the diversity of the casting. Each age group has a person to relate with, you got the elderly, the young children, the dads, mums, family, etc. It's almost like it's saying that no matter what age group you're from, no matter who you are, everyone can be unified in hating David. Now there's also the editing element of the show. More precisely, how much context is presented. What like, what do they choose to include and what to take out. And oh boy, this video has absolutely no context. Now I'm sure it was obvious, but allow me to state all the things that point to it being out of context. And I specifically want to focus on the conversation that occurred between Sam and David. Probably the most obvious clue is that just from listening, you can tell it's cut up. Like it's obvious they took different clips and just strung them together, but at the same time they also tried to make it as if all these statements were said one after the other. I mean, I've told you I'm a model and whatever else. There's a whole backstory to this. I didn't ask to be a model. It I just kind of came to me somehow. Me. So I've been modeling for about 11 years. About six, seven years out of that has been overseas. Just recently in LA. Another thing 
is that in this conversation, we only hear David speak. You never hear Sam speak in the conversation. And maybe this was done deliberately to create the illusion that David didn't even let Sam speak herself to highlight how self-centered David is. But here's the thing. What if she was the one asking if he was a model or the one who asked for more details on what David did as a career? For all we know, it could have been Sam doing most of the talking and then all the editors did was take out all of Sam's lines and just included David's line. Another point is the length of the conversation. Obviously, this is just a one minute video, but still, we have no idea how long this conversation lasted for. Because here's the thing, if most of the conversation was just David speaking, but the actual conversation itself was only like two minutes long, it doesn't really prove that David is self-centered at all. But it still portrays it as if the whole conversation was just David boasting about his life. David himself even says there's a whole, whole backstory, backstory to this, this, but they never show it or include it. Again, for all we know, David could have told his entire backstory in this conversation. But maybe the director chose to cut it all out because it didn't fit their agenda of making David look more dislikable. Believe it or not, while this show is not subtle in the slightest, there are probably many people who fell for it. In fact, one person in the comments says, Now that's all I got from my analysis. If you have anything else to add, feel free to let me know in the comments. But before I end this video, there is one very, very important thing to remember about reality TV shows. And that is reality TV shows do not show reality. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? They are meant to mimic reality. The Google definition states that a reality TV show is a television program in which ordinary people are continuously filmed, designed to be entertaining rather than informative. It's important to focus on the word entertaining because sometimes reality isn't entertaining. So naturally, they're going to do whatever they can to make it entertaining. Like, for example, adding a villain to the plot. The reason why this is so important to distinguish is because from there, you see every person in a reality TV show as what they are. Characters. Everyone is a character. David, Sam, these people, all of them are characters. It's staged to look like these people are simultaneously reacting to what is happening, but really I wouldn't be surprised if these people were being directed or following a script. That's why it's not good to go to any of these people and harass them personally because you didn't like them in the show. Besides the acting and potential scripts at work, another significant thing to consider is editing, as I mentioned before. Remember that this isn't live. The reason why every reality TV show likes to show reactions of certain people because it gives off the illusion that it's live because we feel like we're watching the show with these people who are supposedly watching it live. Therefore, we feel like it is live, but it's not. It's still heavily edited. They still get to choose what to include and what not to include. And that's not a bad thing. Like I said, there's many things about reality that's not entertaining. So naturally, you want to cut that out. Now, let's say hypothetically, there wasn't any direction or scripts or editing. It's just raw footage. It's still not reality. The main reason is the camera. In my opinion, and you can disagree if you want, but the moment you point a camera at someone and they know they are being recorded, that someone stops being themselves, regardless of the person or the situation. Something I also want to add to this point is I think that's the main reason why hidden camera videos used to be so popular. I think everyone universally knows that people will put on an act in front of a camera to some degree. Like, you know, it is possible to have a persona that's very similar to your real self. But there will be differences nonetheless, like small details you choose not to show, which is completely normal. I'm very certain that there are private details about every person that should probably always stay private. But with the emergence of internet stars, many people had this desire 
to know what the genuine side of a person looked like. Hence, hidden camera pranks became a thing. Because it's impossible to see the genuine side of a person if the camera is visible to them. And this doesn't just apply to being recorded. There are many other situations where people will change the way they behave, such as job interviews, presentations, etc. And again, I believe that's very normal. It's not necessarily a terrible thing. It can be terrible, of course. There are downsides. But ironically, if we naturally put up a persona in certain situations, isn't that just a part of who we are? There is a time and place for everything. Therefore, there will be times where you shouldn't be yourself. Even if they claim to be genuine, or even if they are the ones in charge, I believe everyone will naturally put up a persona when a camera is pointed at them. I think that's quite normal. In fact, right now, I'm not being myself. You're probably getting the impression that I'm incredibly intelligent from watching this video, but trust me, I'm not. I think the same goes for reality TV shows. Even if it's just raw footage of someone, it's still not reality because it goes without saying, you need permission and consent to record someone's private life. So naturally, people in reality TV shows are either going to deliberately act in a way that makes them look good or normal, or deliberately act terrible to gain attention. The example I'm going to use for this point is Charles LaBeouf's He Will Not Divide Us. What's your name? Brittany Venti. I came there to trigger people, and it was great. <laughs> So clearly, this guy, David, was acting self-centered for the attention. Or maybe he was directed to act like this. Right? Well, actually, it might be a bit more complicated than that. Like I said in the beginning, the way I found this video was through one of my lectures at uni. In order to show an example of one of the concepts we were discussing, the teacher showed this video to the class. And she said something interesting that caught my interest. I'll play a quick clip from the lecture to show you what she said. I was kind of trying to think of a way to exemplify this too, and I think a really good way to do this might be to look at reality TV show villains and their construction. Um, this fascinates me, right? Because surely, I think to myself, surely when somebody goes on reality TV, they're not interested in being hated by an entire nation. You would think, right? Why would you go on reality TV to kind of be a villain? Why would you go on reality TV to be um, hated like that? And indeed, you know, when you read interviews with these people, they always kind of express a degree of shock that that's how they would be portrayed, that they talk about the editing, for example, and about being quoted out of context. And you know what? I'm actually kind of inclined to believe them in a lot of cases, because things like editing and things like being quoted out of context are the effect of the creation of the text through the implied author. Now, I understand why reality TV shows add villains. On paper, it's a good concept because it keeps viewers engaged with the show. It's okay to have a dislikable character in a show as long as viewers are aware that they are supposed to be dislikable. However, it's a huge issue if it directly harms the actor. According to a comment, this guy's entire model career was ruined because of this. This is a clip of... Um Somebody who for a little bit of time was termed Australia's most hated man. He was not a serial killer or anything like that. He was a reality TV show contestant on The Bachelorette. His name was David Whitco. I don't know if anybody kind of remembers. If this is true, it's kind of scummy if you think about it. Some of these villain actors go into these recording studios not even realizing that they're the villain. At least tell them in advance so they know what they're getting into. But I guess back then, there were very few people who would willingly want to be the person that everyone hates. Although I'm sure nowadays there will be hundreds and hundreds of people lining up who will be more than happy to throw away their dignity just to get some internet clout. 
My main takeaway for this video, be more skeptical or critical. Look, I understand that the realism of reality TV shows is one of the main appeals of the genre. But it's important that afterwards you realize that these people are essentially actors or people being directed by someone. So please, never take it personally. And maybe the next time you see a reality TV show villain, you approach with a more sympathetic or critical lens. My name is Nathaniel, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, hey guys, so that's the end of the video. Just a few last notes I want to add. Uh, firstly, I forgot to mention that you shouldn't actually hate on the show itself or the directors. For many reasons, one, it was five years ago. I will admit that this topic is actually a bit outdated since nowadays there are many people who will willingly volunteer to be hated by the masses. So I think TV shows nowadays don't really have to use all that complicated stuff to trick people into being villains. I think because nowadays people want to be villains. Uh, no, reason number two, if you think logically, what are you going to achieve? by sending hate. Nothing. You won't achieve anything. Uh, number three, uh, the directors are just doing their job. Yes, I said it's scummy, but they have to make it as entertaining as possible because, you know, that means more people will watch, which means the show becomes more successful and hence more people keep their jobs. So yeah, don't send hate to anyone. I think as a general rule, you shouldn't you really shouldn't take any form of media personally especially if it's a fictional or reality tv show media piece of media also just a very quick update about the other video i'm working on which i mentioned in my first video so as i said i finished the intro and i have planned six parts for this video because i have six points now i have finished one out of six parts so progress is being made don't worry Although I will say that the video already is over 21 minutes long. So this video is going to be really long. I'm actually now scared whether my computer will be able to handle it or not. Uh, but we'll see. And when it comes to this video, um, this video you just watched. Oh my goodness. This video turned out way longer than it needed to be. Or at least way longer than I originally planned. It was meant to be just a quick analysis, but oh well, it happens. Um, as a last note, I will say, I probably appreciate comments more than subs and likes, although they are nice, I, I will admit. Um, if you'd like and subscribe, I do appreciate, but up to you really. I Personally, I love reading feedback. Comments like, you know, do you disagree with anything I said? Maybe you think I'm over-interpreting some things. I would love to hear your opinion. Anyways, yeah, that's all. To end it, I'm going to show you just a bit of the behind the scenes with some of the things I recorded. You're probably getting the impression that I'm incredibly intelligent from watching this video, but trust me, I'm not. I'm just very good at pretending that I am. <laughs>